What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. This one's gonna be a little bit more in depth, talking about a subject that kind of has been a thing for a while, but everyone is uh, still on the 8K is too much, it's too taxing on posts. So today we're kind of here to demonstrate and work through some current camera models uh, to show you that that is pretty old school news and should not be a thought in your workflow anymore in 2023. So with that said, I'm gonna talk a little bit about these cameras here in front of us. Uh, we've got the Canon C500 Mark II, the Red V Raptor, and the Alexa Mini LF. Now, specifically what we're talking about today is using these cameras for long form interviews where you just blast through data. Long, long takes, hours at a time, burn the media like crazy and having a good image at the end. For this test today, we're doing all one terabyte cards on all cameras, so all is equal. All cameras are gonna be in a 16 by nine aspect ratio and all shooting 2398. These are the baseline specs for all cameras. We're doing these in their highest resolution as well as uh, some compressed internal as well. Okay, so for this test, we're going to assume that we, everyone else, is going to be doing a 4K master on their timeline and working in a 4K workspace. So let's talk about some numbers. All right, C500 Mark II, shooting in 422 10-bit in C-Log at 4K, which is super sampled down from 6K in MXF, you're gonna get roughly five hours and 53 minutes on one one terabyte card. This is gonna be the winner in that segment for longest runtime, but there's gonna be some drawbacks to shooting in that codec, which we'll talk about later. Now, if you go to 6K, full raw on this camera, those numbers drop pretty significantly. So it's actually 5.9K raw, and you're gonna get roughly 64 minutes of runtime on the C500 Mark II if you do choose to shoot in raw. One last thing to mention, on the C500 Mark II, if this is the camera you're gonna rent for your production, an average rental rate on this camera is gonna be anywhere from probably $500 to $700 a day with all the media and batteries and accessories included. So, something to keep in mind. Moving on to the Alexa Mini LF. Now, if we shoot Airy Raw at 3.8K, which is gonna give you a traditional 4K image, you're gonna get roughly 53 minutes on one terabyte card. So roughly in line with what is happening with the C500 Mark II. Now, if you go to 4.3K and shoot in ProRes 444, that number jumps up pretty significantly and goes to right around two hours. So still not too bad, pretty solid codec, but now you're in a baked in color space in ProRes, still lots of flexibility in post, but you're no longer in a raw format. Also to mention on the Alexa Mini LF, factoring in a rental rate, this camera is gonna be in the realm of $1,500 to $2,000 a day based on how much media you get with this camera. And if you go with a raw codec to shoot on, you're gonna need a lot of cards and these one terabyte codex cards are very expensive to buy, which means they're very expensive to rent. So getting more cards for this camera, is gonna run that cost up pretty significantly. All right, moving on to the Red V Raptor. Now, if we shoot in full 8K 16 by nine in the newest ELQ codec, you're gonna get right around three hours, two hours and 55 minutes runtime on this camera, which is pretty fantastic, to be honest. And that's full 8K, so you got tons of room and post to play around with lots of things. Okay, now if you move up one codec click and you go to LQ on this camera, you're gonna get an hour and 33 minutes. So, great codec on this camera in 8K, full on, basically double the resolution as the Mini LF and the C500, but you are now getting close to almost the same runtime. Two hours here, hour and 33 minutes here. Great trade off for the amount of resolution. So.
If you look at these two cameras, the Mini LF and the Raptor, you go an hour and 33 minutes in 8K, you go two hours in 4.3K, Pretty big difference there. Depends on what your needs are gonna be for your project, but lots of flexibility in here for nearly an identical runtime as the Mini LF. Now, let's talk about media and rental rates for the Raptor. Rental rates on the Raptor, on average, are running from $700 to $1,000 a day with media included. This also shoots on CF Express Type B, which is much cheaper to buy, much cheaper to rent than the Codex cards on the Mini LF. So you do get to go a little bit further for probably a little bit cheaper with the Raptor. Okay, let's get into the crazy part where we really squash the beef and show some stuff post-production. So for these tests, we're gonna be running everything in the newest version of Resolve on a 4K timeline, and we're gonna be running on last year's model of the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 chip. Now, I'm gonna hand this over to Galen, and he's gonna walk us through all of this, and we're gonna look at how well playback happens, how much flexibility we have in post, uh, things for digital punch-ins and zoom-outs, and how much latitude we have given our resolution, and then kind of what our options look like for exports. So take it away, Galen. All right, to start things off, I'm gonna go over some of my settings here. We are on a 4K timeline, and we are going to be using the raw tab that's available in DaVinci Resolve to decode all of these various uh, video files. So to start, here's our red ELQ 8K, lowest quality that we uh, recorded. As you can see, it gets full playback. There's no problems. Here's our Canon RAW file. Also playback, no problems. And our Airy RAW file. No problems. So you might be asking, okay, all these formats play back just fine. We even have a little bit of color on them, which is a node that's being applied to the whole thing that's giving them all some color and contrast. We're still having no dropped frames and basically full playback in 4K. Why choose red? Well, the answer is fairly simple. You have the ability to punch in significantly more than these other, uh, these other files and still retain all the information that one would wanna have uh, in post-production. That's a wonderful face I'm making. Uh, but as you can see, if we just give this a little bit of exposure. That is a completely usable image, and that is cropped in over uh, 250%. Now, if we add just a tiny bit of sharpening to this, suddenly this becomes a very, very usable image. Can I say the same thing about the Canon? Yeah, maybe a little bit. It's 6K, does a pretty good job. But let's take something like Airy Raw, for example. Let's give the same crop to this. It's about 260 something. Let's move over. This is the same exact. And that is significantly rougher looking. You could not crop in this far, reframe, do anything like this, even with sharpening added. This is not a very usable image. It sharpens up okay, but it's just not the same, as you can see, to the red clip. The red holds significantly more detail, and it's going to provide you infinitely more possibilities in post and allow you to basically reframe, make any kind of like last minute adjustments to your image without ever having to worry about quality when having a 4K deliverable. So why does this really matter? Well, it matters because the RED can record three hours of footage in ELQ and AK. Airy can do about 50 some minutes and Canon is somewhere between, but is very similar to the Airy. To wrap things up, the question at hand is why RED? All these uh, codecs run great, they all look great, they all have raw controls, why red? Well, 
it's fairly clear. 8K, 16-bit linear raw, flexibility in post, way, way, way smaller file sizes with zero compromise when it comes to the image quality. In fact, the inverse uh, is applied, which is that it is much higher quality when it comes to sharpness, the ability to crop in, to change things in post, to alter and have a much more fluid post-production workflow. You are just granted so much more flexibility with Raptor's uh, AK codec. And yeah, it's about as simple as that. I hope more people are gonna now be choosing the V Raptor after seeing some of these comparisons for doing more interview footage. I think as an overall cost to value to image, the Raptor might be the winner out of everything that's out currently on the market. And not only that, the low light performance, the multi-format capabilities within the camera give you so much flexibility to shoot and deliver almost any form of content that you want. Now, don't get me wrong, every single one of these cameras looks great and has their quirks, but if you haven't been shooting on Raptor because you're scared of post, I really urge you to take this out for a spin, try it, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We always love doing this content. Thanks again, we'll catch you next time.